With that out of the way, we can go right ahead and talk about the Pacers game where they matched up against, let me just move this over here real quick, where they matched up against the, um, the Bucks, and this was the this was the only game where both teams ended up scoring 100 plus points. And so far in these playoffs, there haven't really been that as many teams that have reached 100 points as we're used to seeing in the um, in the regular season. So this was the first home, this was the first away team to win a playoff game in the um in the first round and in the entirety of the playoffs. So now the series is tied one to one for um, the Pacers and the Pacers have the advantage because now they're going to go play the next two games in Indiana where they have the home court advantage that they need to potentially go up three to one in the series. And when you go up three one in the series, it's really rare that a team comes back from that deficit and even like with the Bucks' condition and where they are right now, without Giannis Antetokounmpo, the um, situation isn't really looking so good for them. And the chances of them even being able to come back from being down 3-1 without Giannis, they're rather slim. Now, in this Pacers game, Tyrese Halliburton, he didn't really play that well, but Pascal Siakam, he played very well in this game. And Halliburton, he ended the game with 12 points and 12 assists on 37 minutes. So, again, the points production from him it wasn't really all that impressive. But Pascal Siakam, he ended the game with 37 points and 11 rebounds. So, that's very impressive coming in from Pascal Siakam. Miles Turner ended the game with 22 points and 7 rebounds and 6 assists. Again, that's also very impressive. And... Andrew Nembard ended the game with 20 points and four rebounds, along with Aaron Naismith, who ended the game with 11 points. So there was a lot more scoring coming in from the Pacers than there was coming in from the Bucks. And Damian Lillard, he ended up scoring 34 points in this game. So one point less than what he did yesterday, but... It does go back to what I was saying. If the Pacers just ended up playing good in both halves and if they would have just continued to score like how they normally do, they would have ended up winning the game despite Damian Lillard's performance. And this sort of holds true in this matchup that happened recently. So they ended up shooting 16 for 36 from three. So that's 44%, which is so much better than what they shot last game and they also shot 55 percent from the field which again was so much better than what they shot last game now with the bucks on their end they shot 40 percent from three which is it's rather good but pacers shot much better than them and they shot 44 percent from the field which again the pacers shot much better than they did and it's like it's rather difficult to beat a team that's shooting better from the field than you are and obviously like that was the biggest difference that was the difference maker between the two teams Milwaukee shot 44% from the field but the pa the Pacers ended up shooting 56% from the field and when you have that wide of a field goal difference it's very difficult so it looks like it looks like Indiana, when you look at just the box scores alone, it looks like Indiana just out offense the Milwaukee Bucks in um in this matchup specifically. So, Pas I mean Pascal Siakam has been playing rather well in these um in these playoff games and you can clearly see that this Bucks team, they desperately need Giannis to return and because they're essentially missing that production. Brooke Lopez, he ended the game with 22 points. Chris Middleton ended the game with 15 points, 6 of 14 from the field. Bobby Portis ended the game 6 of 16 from the field for 14 points. Beverly ended the game 1 of 5. And again, they're just really missing that uh, production from Giannis Antetokounmpo. And if Giannis were in this game, 
chances are he probably would have produced a solid 25, 30 points, which would have been enough for this team to win in the end. But unfortunately, they just couldn't do that, given the lack of offense from the Milwaukee Bucks. And this this Pacers team, they're rather on and off. This time, they were on in this game. And this is a really bad scenario if you are the Milwaukee Bucks, because this is the first time you drop this is you drop a game at home and now you have to go and play Indiana in their um home court where they ha- excuse me hiccups jeez you have to go and play Indiana in their home court where they have the home court advantage and the Pacers they've already like they've shown that they can easily beat the Bucks in the regular season. Like of all the teams that the Bucks have struggled against in the regular season, the Pacers are by far the most memorable one. And you really like you can never really count them out when they're up against the Bucks, especially when they have when they're going into these games with um home court advantage. That like it's like I said previously on several other like on the last podcast and several other times, home court advantage is a really big thing in the postseason. And you sort of have to take advantage of the home court when you have it. And the Bucks, again, like they did not take advantage of home court when they did have it. They could have gone up two games to nothing, but instead the series is now tied. And now they are expecting to steal a game in order to even win the playoff series. So again, it's not really it's not really looking that good for this um for the Bucks because again, now the Pacers they could win both of the um home games that they have set up, go up 3 to 1 and now the series looks all but unwinnable if you are the Milwaukee Bucks and it's really unfortunate because they did not have Giannis Antetokounmpo in this series and he's a very He's obviously one of the most important pieces for the Milwaukee Bucks and their successes. And the fact that they don't have him, it's sort of like already removing that one-two punch that they wanted to be extremely formidable in the regular season. And now it's like, now they're they're not playing with each other and it's sort of letting the team down, unfortunately. Like, I know it's it's unfortunate injuries and there's nothing that you can really do about it, but when you get injured at the wrong time, it really, like, it could hurt your team. And I feel like there, that's a, I feel like that's a rather fair assumption, even though, like, I understand it's like, you can't really blame Giannis for getting hurt, but, I mean, you also can't really get, um, you can't really let it slide, the fact that he did get hurt so late in the season when we know that, when he knows that he's desperately needed. And with this team it's like they need they need him even more now and he has to hurry up and recover from this injury but i'm not entirely sure if he's going to be able to recover quick enough and be able to play in the in the next few games that they'll have now the bucks they hopefully they'll have to steal a game if they want to have any chance of Giannis making a return to the series and um, to the team and the rotation. And in order to do that, they have to keep their playoff hopes alive. And now that they just lost this game, that just like sort of ruins their chances. Now, if you're the Pacers, this is obviously like the best scenario that you could possibly ask for because now you're sort of going into the playoffs with home court advantage and the series is now tied. So now all you have to do is worry about winning the next two games at home and then you basically have the series in the bag, assuming you don't blow the 3-1 lead. But you have a game that you can drop. You can, I'll, you can lose game five and then play game six at home where you feel like you might have much a better advantage. Or you could just win out in five games. But, like again, it's like rather difficult to do that. And, it's again, home court advantage plays a very key role in these playoffs. But we can see, we'll see exactly what they do. 
But as of right now, it's like it's a really bad situation for Milwaukee. And it's one that a lot of teams would like to avoid. But not every team was able to avoid that in these um, in the first round of these playoffs. And now there's there's actually there's another team that ended up tying the series. That was the Dallas Mavericks and the Clippers. And I mentioned before on the previous podcast that if there were any teams that were going to tie the series up, it was going to be the Pacers or it was going to be the Dallas Mavericks. And as it turns out, I end up being right in this assumption. Now, I wasn't, I didn't want to guarantee it. Like, I wasn't entirely sure, obviously, because that's a really bold product. That's a really bold prediction. But with um I did make that assumption I threw that up in the air and it turned out to be right so I'm going to take credit for that so that's basically like all that I have to talk about for this um for the segment again scenario is looking like the Pacers could win both games since the next two games will be at home unless Milwaukee can steal a game and um the Bucks, they sort of have to hope that they could steal at least one game so that way they could keep their playoff hopes alive and hope that Giannis can return and play in the playoffs and they don't want to go down in the series. That's like really, really bad because it puts a lot more pressure on the team and you really don't want that kind of pressure. So that's basically all I have for this segment. So now I will be moving on to the second segment where I talk about the Mavericks stealing the game against the Clippers and what that entails for the future of the playoffs and what that could mean. So I will be right back after this short break. 